All right, welcome to Brian's at the Gate. This is our video blog for January 31st, 2018. Uh, we are happy that you're joining us. There's so much going on in the news. Yesterday, we were all state of the unionized at some level. So we need to talk about Donald Trump and his State of the Union address. It's clearly the biggest story of the day, probably the biggest story of the week. Uh, let's start with positives. I'm curious if you guys have anything positive to say about the uh, present State of the Union address, other than the fact that it was incredibly long and uh, dull. Positive in some ways as it affects the viewing, which might be good, I think, honestly. But uh, positives, uh, let's start with Mark. I mean, what do you think there was yeah. positive in the address? Well, of course, they're all too long, but... But as far as the positives go, I think he did indicate some bipartisanship that uh, he's offering the Democrats an opportunity to come on board to some extent with some of the, I, the big ideas that he has. And that's a good thing. Whether they'll take advantage of it, we don't know. But he mentioned several of those, like the family leave, for example, which probably is transpartisanship all the way. But uh, um, transpartisanship. It just, I just made it up. Oh, I was going to say this is a new, this is a new concept. New term, yes. Uh, the opio opioid crisis, for example, sure. and others yeah. that they'll mention in a yeah. minute. But that's a good thing. That's a definite positive for me. Yeah. And his tone, which we'll get to, I know more. But his tone was measured and uh, and uh, restrained, and that made him sound more presidential, which is okay. excellent. All right. Jeff, what do you think? Positives? I, I think in a positive, uh, he outlined a number of the things he's doing to try to take credit for the economy, specifically, obviously, trumpeting his, tr no, no pun intended, his tax cuts. Yeah. And, uh, and, and went more than just saying, hey, the tax cuts are good. He, he gave s several anecdotes and examples of how that might look. Because the reality is, is it's not just the tax cuts there. He's going to have to continue to defend and make the case that his tax cuts and the regulation relief that he has done is leading to this economic revival. Already you see the Democratic response. The Democratic response is, well, you inherited a great economy from Mr. Obama. Sure. Uh, so, so he's got to make the case, no, there are specific things we did. That's what's made the difference. And so I thought, uh, from what I read, he did fairly well. That's good. Yeah. Bert, what do you think? Well, I, I thought that his overall optimistic tone was, was wonderful. Yeah. I have been uh, wanting to hear him talk like this for, uh, you know, for quite a while. And as of our uh, taping, it's about uh, 2.25. So far as I know, he's not tweeted anything crazy yet to, uh, to try to counter. And, and so uh, I, I think his rhetoric was very positive for the uh, country. It's what you expect. As uh, uh, Professor Heyman has said, taking credit for the uh, economy, and that's something that we need to talk about at some point in time. We all know that mm -hmm. presidents take too much blame, too much credit, yeah. but as we're more ensconced in a global economy, right. sometimes even the way we discuss economics yeah. is just really behind, behind mm -hmm. the times, thinking about it in a, in a real nationalistic sense. But overall, I thought he did uh, a very uh, good, good job. I thought the speech was well written um, in terms of uh, the content. Uh, I did not think I really heard anything uh, that I would be really all that negative uh, about. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit more uh, uh, later. Coming, coming from birth, this is a positively <laughs> effusive phrase for President Trump. Well, that it is, so and partially it's because there, there's you know, very little detail in terms of sure. policy, so there's really right. not that much to talk about in terms right. of policy, but the things that he, he put out as goals, and again, in general, I, I found uh, I liked. Yeah. Uh, I would say for me, the President referenced uh, Russia and China and North Korea, and he pose them all as against our values. Mm -hmm. So not just that we have hostile um, relations with North Korea, but that these regimes exist opposed to American values. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you want to read too much into it, but he seems like he was drawing a line there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's positive for the Trump yeah. administration to make it very clear that we are on an opposite side of issues from Russia in particular. Um, strong words for China, strongest words for North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that's of true. all of the sort of... Uh, uh, balcony shout out, so to speak. The one of the North Korean gentleman uh, and yeah. the crutches was quite powerful. Yeah. And I'm not really prone to being moved by those things. I wouldn't say it was moving, but it was it was well done. It was appropriate. Um, it was and it's quite a quite a stirring story. Yeah. And so good conclusion. Well huh? yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah it was very it was very good. Yeah, I did watch that clip. Yeah, yeah. it was good stuff. Uh, what about negatives? You knew we had to go negative at some point. We're not always in love with Donald Trump here. Uh, Brian's at the gate. So, uh, Bert, let's start with you. We'll go reverse order this time. What do you think negatively about speech? Well, as I, as I hinted before, for this type of speech, I don't like the uh, overall theatrics. I don't like the fact the Democrats uh, are so, uh, you know, almost like stones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, to me, it illustrates how, how divided we are in some sense. And I wish that this were more of an opportunity for us to be able to get together for 
uh, the president to talk very positively. And I, I read uh, an article in terms of fact checking, and he really did very well. I mean, you had to be, this was the Washington Post, and you know, it's like reading a, the commentary of death in there. But in terms of, of facts, he really didn't do a bad job. I mean, he was a little sure. optimistic in places. So again, I don't think he, uh, he really bent the truth at all. And he outlined some things uh, that I think are good. So I, you know, in terms of negative, I, I, I would have to dig down. I, I don't see a lot negative. Okay. Jeff, what do you think? I mean, the things that we saw that, from my perspective, were negative are, are nothing new. I mean, he yeah. says the era of economic surrender is yeah. over. Okay, really? Because yeah. he hates free trade. Yes, Okay, he does. Well, so well, I'm in favor of free trade. So, But that's nothing new, so that's what we'd expect. Right. You mentioned the, uh, the, what did you say, transpartisanship? <laughs> uh, <laughs> from my mind, the idea of, of, of uh, surrender on an, an issue is where gonna, he wants to force uh, firms to be able to pay uh, medical leave. Absolutely. Uh, and so yeah. forth, which traditionally Republicans have been opposed. Well, well Mr. Trump is effectively... Uh, a moderate Democrat in the sense that he's now in the middle, so he'll take a little bit from the conservatives on some areas. He, yeah. he goes for some big government over here. Perhaps the most uh, negative uh, from my perspective is is the idea of the infrastructure spending, which is, is just, there's so many analysis that suggest that's not going to lead to the economic results mm -hmm. he has. I do think, though, that that there's probably room in there somewhere for a deal that could be not as bad as it otherwise might be if the, if the Republicans yeah. are smart enough. We can maybe talk about that, but, yeah. but I didn't like, uh, obviously, the big push for infrastructure. Sure. Yeah. Mark? Well, I do agree. The, the infrastructure proposal, while in theory it might be good in a limited sense, in like a, an interstate system, for example, a kind of thing like that, might be, is rife for, for uh, cronyism. Sure. It's just right. It's going to happen. Yeah. So it's going to happen. Everybody's going to want something. Yep. And who's not going to get something? We may give everybody everything they want, which is going to cost us through the nose, right? That's one thing I didn't like. I agree with Jeff that trade policy, uh, the big idea of trade policy is that he, he's at least suspicious of free trade. I'm not going to say he hates it, but he's suspicious of it, certainly, in certain respects. Yeah. That's a negative for me. Yeah. Uh, the opioid crisis, I wanted him to hear more, wanted him to hear, I wanted to hear more from him regarding... Um, how he's going to deal with this at the level of pharmacies and doctors who, pharmacies who fill prescriptions sure. that they know are sus suspect, right. doctors who give these prescriptions. I'm not suggesting some centralized agency should be set up, but <laughs> some kind of... The National Prescription Service. Yeah, the National Prescription Service. It sounds like Committee of Public <laughs> yeah. Safety in yeah. the French Revolution. Right. <laughs> but those, were, those were negatives for me, and I, I agree with, all, with several of you. I think it's just, I just don't like the, the theatrics of the whole thing, it's, but we're, we have to live with that. Right, it's just it's the TV era we're in. So, yeah, I, for me, uh, it's interesting. I think are we watching the change of the Republican Party? Do you think that's what we're looking at? Because uh, I, I would agree, Mr. Trump's tone was positive. I think it was largely unifying in some ways, um, but there was really no discussion of debt, no discussion of <laughs> deficits, um, no dis right. discussion of entitlement reform. Um, no discussion of really what I would say is basic fiscal responsibility, which has kind of been at the cornerstone of the Republican agenda for the last several decades. Now, you could argue in practically working it out, Republicans haven't always been good mm -hmm. at working it out, but at least they've been rhetorically committed to these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Those, were being all, those were all absent from <laughs> Mr. Trump's speech. And I, as someone who believes in those sort of basic conservative mm -hmm. fiscal responsibility things, it's, it's disappointing to me. Uh, it is. I agree. Republicans are just being honest, finally. Yeah. You think I that's mean, what it is? They're since 1967, we have not had once a balanced budget. We have once a balanced budget. So no matter who's in power, the problem is there's no incentive structure that, that pr produces that incentive for the for people to, to, to limit their spending. They're, it's just not there. I agree, you know? I agree with you, but at least the rhetoric, you can, at least you can use the rhetoric to try to curb people's worst instincts. Sure. But now the rhetoric's gone. Oh, it's gone too, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what I, what I hear, heard last night was basically George W. Bush, big government conservatism. Sort no, of it, was, it was worse yeah. than that, uh, in my mind. It's <laughs> worse than that, yeah. I, I, I mean, George. It was a kind of compassionate conservatism. I, yeah. I, I don't disagree yeah. with that. Um, yeah. I, uh, Jonah Goldberg has uh, a relatively new podcast, uh, it's um, called the, the Remnant. Yeah. And the reason he named it The Remnant was because he thinks there's a remnant yeah. of uh, ideologically, more ideologically pure uh, <laughs> classical uh, liberals out there, of which I uh, consider myself one. I may not be quite as pure as, uh, as the driven snow, but I, I, am, <laughs> a, uh, I am a classical <laughs> liberal. And I, again, I feel completely separated from the Republican Party almost. Yeah. And partially that might be part of my apathy that I don't look at his words on trade or 
Uh, we, we may have some fun in the, in the future talking about infrastructure because I do think that's one area where the government should be uh, something that the government can do. Uh, and should, should, should be doing uh, for us and for, uh, for, 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 for the economy. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know what's happened to the Republican Party. Again, because to me, it's not the party of Reagan. It's not what I liked. Right. Uh, and, and so I think his, uh, his stamp on the party will be hard to overcome, uh, particularly if he is successful yeah. over the next three years. And he very well could be. Right. Yeah, so be. We, we will be... Uh, you know, like a Western European nation, and we're, we're just going to drift down that, that road. Yeah. I think that in the, in the big sense of it, parties are always under the, uh, there's a contest for who's going to, oh, whose sure. party yeah, is it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, if you look at the Democratic Party today, I mean, if you're <laughs> comparing what the Republican is to Reagan, yeah. look at the Democratic Party today compared to the Clinton Democratic <laughs> Party. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh my. It's, it's remarkable. Uh, so, 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 so I think it's always a contest, and, and there's no doubt, as long as he's on the, uh, the top megaphone, or the tweet a phone right now, <laughs> then then he's going to be the one driving the agenda, and the Republicans are going to have a hard time unless they want to have open warfare with him. The problem is, of course, that that uh, the the political pressures on on the, the members of Congress are mm. always to spend. Always. The only one that can really have this restraining force is the executive, and when you have an executive that's not committed, then it's it's really hard to get anything done. That's right. That's so. right. I I don't know. I I I'm I'm going to sound even more pessimistic. I'm sorry, but. The, the long run just seems to indicate that in any regime, the shift is in the area of least resistance. Yeah. So we've shifted. Everybody's shifted, not just the Democrats, but the Republicans too have shifted to the left in the last 40 years or so. And I don't, I, unless we have some restraint that's enforceable, I don't see that stopping. That's really, pe that's real. But there, there was, there was a, a high, a kind of, of a lurch to the right in the in the uh, late seventies and eighties, right. yep. and Somewhat. there's been a uh, well, there, no, there was. But even in the Reagan administration, it was more spending. Right? Well, in terms of spending, I agree. Reagan to, Reagan was a Keynesian. It's, yeah. it's true. He had to it's tip true, on true. and it was, oh, I, it was, it was I, a complicated. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think any yeah. any one of us put in the position that these uh, men and women are put in. We would also spend. I mean, we, we would do the same thing. It's just going to be the nature. I mean, a congressman nature of the or a senator. Yes, if, yeah, if we yeah. were in that in that position, would, I think the it'd pressure be very, would be immense. Be very difficult yeah. uh, not to, with the way the system is is, is, more, is more set term. up. Right. But it, right now, there is no one talking about what made America exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's no one that stands for freedom in terms of our political uh, mm -hmm. parties. There's no one really that stands for free trade. Uh, mm -hmm. You have s sporadic individuals. Maybe it's transitory. Maybe the Republican Party party will trend back. Uh, post-Trump, but I just, uh, again, I, I'm a little bit skeptical, mm -hmm. just given the way that uh, Western Europe has gone in recent years, I, I, I'm really skeptical. All right, let's talk about the politics of this thing. How do you guys see this thing playing out? Not just the State of the Union address, but also some of the issues that he brought up. Uh, let's start with Mark. I mean, how do you see this thing playing its way through the political system? You see some wins, you see some losses, good for the Republicans, bad for the Democrats. How does this work? He raised the issues that need to be raised. He's given them to Congress now. Uh, I think the immigration issue is going to be tough, the toughest one for him with regard to what he can get versus what he wants. Um, I do think they can get, uh, I think it's possible to get good solutions with Congress on the opioid crisis. It's more possible there. Um, it's also possible to get something on infrastructure, although again, I'm a little more skeptical as Jeff was about right. what's going to turn out there. Right. It's one thing to get something politically, it's another thing to get something good, yeah. right? <laughs> They're two different things. But I do think he's, he's got a chance there, politically speaking. With the immigration issue, I just don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah. It's gonna, it may blow up again. Um, it, it, it's never been, it just doesn't get, seem, to, seem to get resolved at all. Uh, will we have, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Okay. I'd like to see what would happen with, uh, with He's offered, he's offered some type of pathway to citizenship. One point, was it eight million or six million? 1.8 1. 1. million. 1.8 yeah. million. That's a pretty big um, piece of bait, I would think, to the Democrats. But they may dig in their heels. Yeah. That's what we don't know. Jeff, what do you think politically? I, I think politically he satisfied all of his, his base, his constituencies. 
uh, such that they'll be on board with us. Even people that are moderately, you know, there's some parts of, uh, of the Trump. I, I wasn't any worse. If anything, I was a little bit more happy with what he had to say. You've heard effusive in, in, in light and by comparison of, of right. Dr. Wheeler, right. who's been a harsh critic. I, I think ev everything that across the spectrum will be slightly more his direction. So, so even if you're a, a, a very much a progressive, you probably liked hearing and were, were perhaps sh uh, surprised when we talked about prison reform as being oh, yeah. something we need to get yeah. done. And that's yeah. an opportunity. We ought to be yeah. able to make some progress there. Yeah. So I, I think in that sense, it was a political winner. And, and several of the comments he made, uh, you know, right to try, you know, for people that are dying and, and they yeah. can't get drugs here in America. I, I think that that is a, a, a political winner. There's a number of things that I think this yeah, only helped him in my mind. Yeah. Bert, what do you think about the politics of the immigration issue? I know we haven't really, we've sort of nibbled at it a little bit and talked about it a little yeah. bit. Do you, mind, do you want to jump a little bit more fully into the immigration? Well, I, I think his proposal that he outlined, uh, that he m mentioned again last night, uh, does come off as being a uh, centrist mm -hmm. uh, tor towards the middle. So you know, he, he wants to be able to uh, allow some uh, path to citizenship. And I, I've also heard the arguments from several quarters that once the dreamers the doors open for those guys, right. it's very difficult to close it. Right. I mean, and it's just going to be very difficult to, with the undocumented workers that we have in here now uh, that so many businesses really like. Yeah. It's, going, it's going to be difficult to handle this short of some sort of something that the right calls amnesty. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, what, whatever have to E-verify. I was going to say, what about E-verify yeah, on the other yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say a word. No, because I don't yeah. think the Republicans really care. They don't they, they really want the uh, agricultural workers no, and, and, other, and others. Yes, they, want, they want the labor here. Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I think that's good. I, I think the uh, notion of what we call chain migration uh, should be stopped. Yeah. I, I think the uh, diversity of lottery is not as uh, as bad in in some ways uh, as we make it. If if there has to be a way of uh, slowing down the supply of uh, of uh, immigrants coming into uh, coming into our our nation, we have to have some way of, of choosing, so, some way of picking. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that it's and of course it's not random. I mean mm -hmm. the, the individuals go through. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it rigorous, but they have to have at least a uh, supposed betting. At least, at least a high school or equivalent uh, degree. Uh, if they are working in one industry, they can. Then they have to go through the regular steps that you get checked out for the kind of stuff that I want to see people checked out for. And then, you know, then the randomness element comes in. Um, so that I, you know, border security uh, has to be there, but we. You know, we need to have a reasonable policy before we have border security. I wish he would use the wall as a as a bargaining piece, and then let the wall go and pick up E-Verify or something that has a, a scant chance of helping and being something more that symbolic, you know, than symbolic. But E-Verify is tough. Um, That's going to be tough to get through. Congress. I, yeah, I don't think it will probably. Yeah. Although it, it does have uh, support uh, across the political spectrum that's scattered yeah. about, where it did did back. Uh, it did. Back, back in the day, but again, we're kind of up against the wall here. Yeah. But when does the uh, temporary, uh, the spending, government funding? Is that February 8th? I, think. I yeah, was thinking that. Look at that, guys. It's not far, away. Yeah, not far and away. And the immigration yeah. issue was it's there. And this is really there, something yeah. that needs to be talked about and discussed over over time. And yeah. again, it's going to be very hard to do that right now. They might cut some kind of a deal. Yeah. And the reality is whatever deal they cut might be as good as a policy that had been fully you know, vetted and discussed in, in, in reality. Yeah. Um, so again, I don't know if they if they'll be able to come uh, to any uh, <laughs> any real yeah. conclusion or not. Let me ask one follow-up question yeah. on that for you, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Uh, I read someone, uh, or at least heard someone suggest that do the Democrats even want to deal on immigration? Let's recall, of course, they had complete control with Mr. Obama, yep. and they would not push this through. And many people at the time suggested they could because uh, they could have already had this, and they didn't. They yep. wanted the issue rather than. That. Will they want the issue, especially when they would have to deal with Trump when, when that, the hatred of Mr. Trump is at the core of their base? Do they want a deal? Uh, I don't think they want a deal, honestly. I don't think the leadership wants a deal. Uh, the driving force against that, though, will be those red state senators, people like Claire McCaskill in Missouri, people like uh, Donnelly in Indiana, <laughs> who are in heavily Trump states oh, yeah. at the moment, mm -hmm. who are vulnerable Democrats coming up soon. I think there are, what, six or seven of those? So you're getting close to that 60 vote threshold at that point. Um, so no, I don't think the party wants to deal, but I think there might be enough individual senators to, to jump on it. And so uh, I don't think the Democrats are really interested in a solution to the problem right now. I think the angst in the system works better for them in some ways. Maybe, so. but, uh, let me push back on that just for a yeah. second. I wonder whether, though, whether they're thinking about this properly. 
um, if they let it go, the status quo holds. The status quo, if Donald Trump wishes to ask for, ask for a greater appropriations for border security without having a yeah. wall, right. and if he can get that, which he likely could get that, then they're stuck now. Now they have border security, which they could have had something different if they'd been willing to deal. Stuck yeah. only if you hold them to their rhetoric, right? <laughs> that doesn't mean they're going to be consistently held to their yeah. past positions. And the you know, Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they get slippery when they want to get slippery, and they uh, <laughs> they look for political advantage. And so I mean, we'll see. I mean, Chuck Schumer last night stood up a few times. He did, he did. It Nancy was, Pelosi it didn't seem to stand up at all, from what I could tell. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the Democrats play this, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think the president has a chance to really uh, strike a blow with independence on a lot of this stuff. I really think if he can keep his Republican Party happy to some extent, or at least satisfied, to me, these kinds of proposals have a chance to play really well with independent voters. And yeah. I think that really helps them in places like Ohio, Michigan, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Iowa, and it makes 2020 look more feasible. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, interesting stuff. We're going to have to call it a day here. Uh, thanks for joining us as always. Uh, please put your comments below and uh, add questions. At some point, we do plan on addressing some of those questions when we get a chance. So, uh, thanks for watching.